Okay, right now we're going to review this brand new 2013 model. It's a Clarion CMD8, their marine receiver. I also brought along a whole bunch of accessories so I can detail educate you on all the remotes, optional accessories, which ones you need, which ones you don't need, as well as the Pandora feature, which is a new feature, the Sirius XM as well. But as I always do, I give you the outside look over. From the front, side, top, bottom, and every other way, it is a CMD7. It does have some changes on the inside. But harness, exactly the same, 16-pin harness, Clarion. Nothing new there. Side profile, exactly the same. All stainless steel, as you always have been. Rubber surround, grommets, everything still the same. Size the same, plugs the same. On the rear, just real quick so you can see what it is. Antenna, two plugs here, one for a hardwired hard remote, which is optional, here for the Sirius XM. On the back, this right here is going to be their USB with the watertight removable cover. And on the back, varying from the CMD6 model, because this model here has two channels of RCA preamp outputs, which can either be front and rear, or it can be front, and you can select the rears into a sub. All right, and I can tell you a quick fix on how to get around that if you don't want to invest the extra money into the CMD6 and have the older technology. Over here is just a standard composite RCA input. Okay, so let me set this camera down, and let me talk to, me, talk to you some more about some of these workarounds. Now, if there's ever any one question I get more repeatedly asked over and over again about these Clarions is, how is this radio mount? Why is it so big? Um, does it fit? Where do you put the CD? So super quick, let me go over that because that's always the number one question. And it's usually the same story. It's the same old thing. It's, an, it's a new boater. One of these uh, amateurs, as I call them. Now up at the top here, the Clarion button. One press of that will fold down the face. Right there is where you're going to put your CDs. This model CMD8 plays CDs, MP3s, and AACs, as well as WMA encoded files. So whatever you're going to put on the disc, this guy's going to read it, no problem. This face is non-detachable. Um, why would it need to be, you know? That would be actually a very cool feature for a, a GPS. But uh, not so much on this. Now as far as the size, first off, let me show you what you're working with. You got 7 and 3 quarters exactly on the face width. Okay, and that's on the outside dimension, not on the inside dimension. That's going to be different. So if you're going to write this down real quick, let me tell you, because Clarion site doesn't tell you. But I will. So, the thickest side on the front fascia piece, you got seven inches and three quarters. Seven and three quarters. On your height, you got three and a half, or three and nine sixteenths if you really want to play it safe. But it's kind of close. You can just call it three and nine sixteenths because we like to play things safe around here. Okay, so that's for your fascia. Now, for the chassis, the piece is actually going to mount into the into the uh, the boat itself. You got seven and two sixteenths width. As far as your your height, you got two inches, and as far as the mounting depth itself, you got six and a half. So that might be some pretty useful information to the right person. I don't know why people don't. Put this up front and Clarion put it onto their own site, but whatever, that's what it is. So anyway, with this Clarion, which may give you a little close up, let me adjust this a little bit, focus a little better. Okay, that's nice. So you can just kind of gaze at it while I'm chitter chattering in the background. So some general features about this unit, you got a water watertight, they call it watertight flip down console, okay, I, unless you have a center console and this thing is going to just be getting beaten with water, um, not a good idea, but you might want to try to find a better location, but in my experience these things never break down, but it will shorten the life, that I can tell you. Um, it, it does exceed the salt fog exposure of a company that does an ASTM rating if that means anything to you it doesn't to me and I've been a boater for quite a many years um, it does have a sealed PCB or a you know PC board inside the unit 
So basically it's going to be completely um, isolated from salt water and rougher environments. Um, in the back, as I showed you, there is a USB port. It comes with about a three foot length of cord, which you must use uh, very much so, especially with this one, because this unit supports Pandora, which the CMD7 of last year did not. You do have to get the app, of course, onto the phone. It must be connected hardwired through that USB port on the CMD8 in order to utilize it, as well as your iTunes playback music list. Now, on the back, when I was talking about those RCAs, this unit, the CMD8, as well as last year's CMD7, uh, just as a reference, um, if you're upgrading, you have two sets of preamp outputs. You have a front and a rear by default, but the rear you can switch to a sub. So, in my opinion, if you had a really kick-ass audio system, you had a four-channel for your, for your interior speakers, or your two upstairs and two downstairs in your cabin, uh, and you were fading them back and forth for wherever you were located in the boat at the time, and you had a dedicated subwoofer, that's really what you need. Now, if you have a unit like this and you only have two sets of RCAs, my personal advice to anybody who's going to do that, you can do what I've, I've done many times, and I have one of my own vehicles that I, I do it. Just set this unit up for front and rear only. Get yourself a pair of Y splitters, run it off the rears, and just have an amplifier that has its own low-pass crossover filter, so that way you can get audio fed to it and get like a, a just a basic cheap rotary volume knob or bass knob that they're called. Put that in line and mount it wherever in your helm or wherever you want to see it and that will give you full control adding sub plus having front and rear left and right respectively so that way you can actually create a real six channel system so if that's the kind of deal you want to have you know number one rock on good for you but that's how you do it because if you don't and you must have six channels of RCA preamp outputs, you'd have to step down into a CMD6, which is now, since this came out, two years old. Who wants a two-year-old unit, right? Not me. So that's how that's done. Now this guy here, the four channel are two volt RCA preamp outputs. The amplifier that's built into the unit itself is 45 by four, but of course that's peak power. Here we talk real stuff. Realistically, you're gonna get about 18 watts. And once you get into the upper wattage, obviously, you're going to be experiencing a lot of distortion. So if you're going to go that route and you want to have clean power, obviously buy yourself a real amplifier. There is high-pass and low-pass filters built into the unit. It has a BDQ, which is a pretty uh, primitive sound enhancement feature, but it is handy, especially in a marine environment, I feel. Um, in the back, that plug for the wired remote input, you can use three different remotes. And I'm going to show you those real quick. So I'm going to back out of here. Move that right on over, and you got you got some choices here. If you really want the good stuff, this is the one you're gonna want. This here is an MW1. This one here, I don't know exactly when, but I'm gonna imagine in a very short future, this is going to be replaced by a model called an MW4. So if you're going out now, I mean, and you gotta have it, obviously get the, um, the MW1, but you might want to actually hold off if you can to the MW4. Or get the MW1 just to play around with until the better one comes out, pull it out and put in the MW4. But of course the MW4 from what I understand and I've seen a, you know, a picture of what it's supposed to look like, they're actually doing away with the round. It's actually supposed to be like a square, kind of like how Pioneer route. Uh, and I don't know if that's a good thing. So these actually might become liquid gold. See, So keep that in mind. Uh, if you're not so crazy about having the LCD on it, you can of course just get this one which is MW2 which works perfectly, except no LCD display, it's smaller. Um, and if you're ever gonna add any remote to this unit, you have to get the extension cables. If you're adding two, which you can do, you could have as many remotes as you want, really. You could just get these, get your cable, and then you have to get the Y splitter. If you wanted the model of the extension cable, that's it, MWRXCRET. The RYCRET would be the Y cable. And like I said, you can and definitely add as many remotes as you want. So if you have some, some crazy yacht and you need to have five remotes, whatever reason, you can do it. Now they also have this unit which came out maybe about five or six months ago now. I'm actually starting to think about getting one of these for my transom. And this here is an RF based remote control. It's a model MF1 and this will actually eliminate the necessity to run wires because it transmits through RF, radio frequency. Very straightforward install as you can see. Shouldn't take much more than 20, 30 minutes in my opinion. So you can, of course, like I said, you can get this. You could have this. You could have that. You could have it all, baby, if you want.
but right now that's what we have because the MW4 is not out yet. If you wanted to add the satellite radio to this unit, easy to do. Right back here, this plug here it says Sirius XM on it. This here is the new tuner. You would use the V200. Plugs right in there. And on the other side of this little tuner, which is nice and small by the way, run out your antenna lead and it's a wrap. Activate your kit and you're good to go. Very big improvement over how they used to be. They used to be a nightmare. You used to have to get the SIR CLA1, which is the interpretation module, and the SEC1. So you had these two big old ugly boxes. Um, wasn't a whole lot of fun. It was triple, if not quadruple, the expense. Now, one P Series Connect, done. And you get all the new programming. So it's a joy. Um, the hardware, they give you stainless steel for all your mounting. Right up on here, make sure when you install this, remove those two screws because they are shipping screws and you, this won't play very good if you don't remove those. So keep that in mind. Um, very straightforward. There's your little grommet. Of course, you're going to want to use that. Now, real quick, I want to turn this thing on and show you what it works like. Let's turn this unit on for you. I can see I'm going to have to make an adjustment. So I'm just going to real quick adjust some stuff. Okay, that looks better. Okay, so I'm going to turn it right back off again. And back on. Very straightforward unit to operate, that's for sure. Up on the top, these are your source modes, your disk your aux or your iPod, AM, FM, and then your satellite radio button. So right there laid out so you don't have to multi-toggle a button, hold anything, nothing like that. Very simple to operate. Nice, gushy rubber buttons, big buttons. I'm sure the old people can appreciate that. I like it too. They're a little big. I'm not used to buttons that are this big. But I guess it's not a bad thing. You know can't have everything when you're designing these kinds of things. So as far as what this unit will do, all the functions, it's very straightforward. It shouldn't take us very long. Now in your audio mode, you have the BDQ, which you can toggle on, turn it off. You can see that they have some presets, bass boost, impact, excite, custom. So you can customize your own, make it and set it up. Um, they got a return button. So if you ever get confused with this unit and you just don't know what to do, it's a return button. Very, very, you know, very, very good for the right person. For me, I would never personally use it because I know what I'm doing. Now, as far as your um, your music, <clears throat> it's, it's a little easier for me to just do it this way. What the fuck. Okay, so real quick on the face, you have all your source mode buttons right here, disc, which is top left. Next to that is your aux slash iPod. This here is, of course, the Clarion button, which opens the face so you can access the disc. Over here is your AM, FM, and right here is your satellite radio. So if you have that equipped, one toggle, power button right here. In this group of section, you have audio, display, option, and adjust, volume button, nice big rubber volume button. Moving on over to the other side, you got your play and your pause, mute buttons if you hold it, the main menu button, the return, which is the oh, oh crap button, enter, then you have your seek and you have your tune. Very straightforward here. Another noteworthy thing of talking about here is these little guys on the corner, these do expand. That is where you mount the bottom two screws of the face right there, just so you know. Then up in here, you have the other two. Um, figure was worth talking about. So very, very straightforward, streamlined interface. Option button. This is going to get you into your EQ. You can either go with all the the factory setups, bass boost, impact, excite, custom, custom, because we're custom guys. Hit that. You're going to have in every section. You're going to have the gain. You're going to have the filter, which is going to be your low pass filter or high pass filter in this case. And you're going to have the actual cue, so you can actually set the setting 
where you want it to be accentuated. And of course you're going to have the same thing, you have the gain, the filter setting, and the volume for the mid frequencies. Treble, same thing, gain, filter, and Q settings. Very straightforward. So this is very cool because you have a nice high pass setting. So if you're going to use a four channel amplifier, very worthwhile if you have, um, you know, a regular pair of speakers up on a top deck and you have a sub, you can control each independently right from here. Subwoofer control volume built right in here as well. Your presets are very straightforward to on, as well on this unit. Presets, just hold the button, very easy to do. Your adjust button, you got the clock setting. This here is your settings for your um, sensitivity on your tuner section for your AM FM, which is very handy because boats are typically pretty poorly grounded as far as the antenna receptacle goes. At least mine is. Then you have your scan. You have ever scroll, you can turn that on, turn it off. This is how you select the rear subwoofer preamp outputs. Turn one on, turn it off, convert the rear from subwoofer to the full, full range rear output. Um, your phase for your subwoofer, you can inverse it or have it normal. Your Pandora, you can turn it on, turn it off. Dimmer, contrast, and the contrast is very nice. I mean, for my demonstration here in front of you on this video, I'd have to max it out so you can even make it, make it out and make it legible. But in the real world, middle of the road 5 is about right. And it has a little beep feature. 12, 24 hour time. So if you're a military guy or just a regular guy like me, reset button, clock, and you're back to where you started from. Power, one touch. So hey, man, at Clarion CMD8, this thing is a winner. If you're going to get one for your boat, you know, make a good choice. So if you want something and you just want disc, Pandora, nice iPod compatibility, good amount of expandability, this is a winner. So the CMD8 is, you know, I mean, it's Clarion. It's marine. I mean, what can you, how can you go wrong? But just keep in mind that if you ever do plan on adding video or DVD or a TV screen in your boat in the future, you might want to also look at my video for a CMV1. Both of these items I sell in my store, so if you want more actual information photographs to educate yourself with, you know, look into the CMV1 as well as this model, which is the CMD8. This is the one I presume most people would go ahead and get, but keep it in mind. So there you have it. There's a CMD8 review.